I'm Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on global learning. I understand that there are many topics which are globally seen by many students in high school. Integration is one of them. So what I've done here is that I'm going to solve a test paper on integration, which will be of my IB student. And that's a standard all over the world. We'll take up solutions of these questions and also understand the basic principles to solve similar questions. So let me thank all my students for doing so well and sharing their test papers with me. These solutions will hopefully help many others. So I'll take up this test paper now, solve each and every question from here one by one. Here is question number one. Question number one is, it is given that definite integral from 1 to 3 of f of x dx is equal to 5. Write down the value of definite integral from 1 to 3 of 2 times f of x dx. Part b is, find the value of this definite integral 3x squared plus f of x dx when the lower limit or lower bound is 1 and the upper is 3. You can always pause the video, answer these questions and then look into my suggestions. Now as you understand, every definite integral will lead to a number as a solution, right? We are already given the number 5 representing this definite integral where the lower bound is 1 and the upper is 3. Now, we need to find what happens when we multiply this by 2. Applying the normal rules and for definite integrals, 2 is a constant. So everything gets multiplied by 2. So this is basically equal to the definite integral from 1 to 3 of f of x dx. Now this integral is given to us as 5, so it results into 2 times 5 as 10, our answer. Perfect. So that is how you're going to solve part A. Now in part B, we could rewrite this definite integral as sum of integrals, right? So, so we can just write this as integral from 1 to 3 for 3x squared dx plus the integral from 1 to 3 for f of x dx, clear? Now, to evaluate the first part, we can use antiderivatives, correct? So, we could rewrite this as the antiderivative of 3x squared is what? x cubed over 3 times 3, right? So, we could write this as 3 times x cubed over 3. Now, we are given the limits from 1 to 3, right? Plus... The second part we already know is equal to 5, so I'll write number 5 for that. To evaluate the first part, we can first simplify cancelling the 3's, right? So, so what we get here is x cubed within 1 to 3 plus 5, and that is equal to 3 cubed minus 1 cubed, right? So 3 cubed is, is 27 plus 5, right? So 3 cubed is 27. So we get 27 minus 1 plus 5. So that gives me 26 plus 5 as 31. So our answer here is 31, right? So our answer is equal to 31. So that is how we are going to solve it. So I hope the steps are absolutely clear. Now let's move on and take question number two. Now here we'll discuss question number two with you, where we learn the concepts of derivatives and integration. The question here is, the velocity v in meters per second of a particle moving in straight line is given by v of t equals to e to the power of 3t minus 2 where t is the time in seconds. Find the acceleration of the particle at t equals to 1, b, 
At what value of t does the particle have a velocity of 22.3 meters per second? Well, it is no calculator, so leave your answer as the exact value. Part C is find the distance traveled in the first second. So the very first part, we are given that the velocity v is equal to e to the power of 3t minus 2. We need to find the acceleration of the particle at t equals to 1. So what is acceleration? Well, acceleration is the derivative of velocity, right? So, so we'll find the derivative of this. So derivative of exponential function. So it will be e to the power of 3t minus 2 times the derivative of the exponent, which is 3. So that's what you get, right? So 3 times this. Now, if you need to find the acceleration at 1, t equals to 1, we'll substitute 1 here. So we get 3 times e to the power of 3 minus 1, which is 3, oh sorry, this is 3 minus 2, right? So we substitute 1, 3 times 1 is 3, 3 minus 2. So it gives us 3 to the power of, 3 times e to the power of 1, which is 3, <coughs> 3 e. And so we get the acceleration at t equals to 1 as 3 e meters per second square. Is that clear to you? Right? So, so that is how we are going to solve the very first one, part A. Now let's look into part B of this. It says, at what value of t does the particle have the velocity of 22.3? Well, we will now work with the velocity function as such. We have velocity as e to the power of 3t minus 2. We have been given velocity of 22.3. That should be equal to e to the power of 3t minus 2. To find the value of e, we can take natural log both sides, right? So we get ln 22.3 equals to ln e to the power of 3t minus 2, which is basically 3t minus 2, right? Since ln e is 1, so that is equals to ln 22.3. So from here, you can calculate what t is. So you get t as ln 22.3 plus 2 divided by 3, right? That is the value of t. So we'll leave it at this stage since we are not allowed the calculator, right? So time t in seconds is for us, let's write down here. So t basically is equal to 2 plus ln 22.3 divided by 3 in seconds. Okay. Let's take uh, part C on a fresh page. Find the distance traveled in the first second. Now to find the distance traveled, we need to integrate, right? So we are given the velocity as equal to e to the power of 3t minus 2. Distance traveled in first second, that means from 0 to 1, correct? So that is what it means. So, so we need to integrate this, right? So the displaced, I should say distance, it is a positive function, correct? So it is always increasing. Now since it is a positive function, uh, the integral will also give you the area under the curve which is the distance. So the distance will be integral of vt dt from 0 to 1, which basically is from 0 to 1. So the definite integral for e to the power of 3t minus 2. Now we'll apply the antiderivative rules to find the solution. So we get this as the function e to the power of 3t minus 2 divided by 3. And we are going to look into the limits from 0 to 1, right? So that is equal to 1 third of e to the power of, when you put 3 here, you get 3 minus 2 minus, when you put 0 here, you get 1 over 3 e to the power of minus 2, right? So the answer here is 1 over 3e 
minus e to the power of minus 2. Correct? So that becomes the solution and the units will be in meters. So I hope that makes sense. So that is how we are going to find the total distance traveled in the first second. Perfect. So here is question number three from one of my students test paper, IB question paper it is. Let me thank all my students for sharing their test papers with me and doing fairly well. We'll actually have two related questions based on the integral of 1 over 2x plus 3. Let's look into 3a first. It is find integral of 1 over 2x plus 3. Now, you can always pause the video, answer this question, and then look into my suggestions. Let's apply the method of substitution to find this integral, right? So what we will do here is that we'll substitute let u equals to 2x plus 3. In that case, taking the derivative, what do we get? We get du dx equals to 2. Or we can say that we have to replace that dx. So we can say half of du equals to dx. Correct? So we are going to make this substitution here. And we can write this integral as integral of. So we are replacing 1 over 2x plus 3 as u. So we get 1 over u and dx is being replaced by half du right so that's how we get our integral and now we can write this as half of integral 1 over u du okay and that gives you half of ln u right plus c so that becomes the the integral and now we can replace u with 2x plus 3. So what we get here is half of ln 2x plus 3 plus c as our answer. Is that clear? So that is how you should be doing. But remember one thing that when you write ln u, you have to take the positive value. Now since 2x plus 3 could be negative also. Now ln is not defined for Uh, less than 0 or even equal to 0. So we have to take its, its positive value. So that is very important to write. So that is not to be missed. Correct? So the actual answer should be ln absolute value of 2x plus 3 half. Right? So, so that is kind of important to understand. Since uh, 2x plus 3 could actually take any value. Well, 2x plus 3 will not be 0, right? But it could be negative or positive, right? It is uh, never equal to 0. So, so that is what you should be writing as your answer, right? I hope that makes sense. Kind of important to understand. So let me put a star here. Since I've seen many students missing on absolute value. So the uh, integral of 1 over u is basically ln absolute value of u, correct? 2x plus 3 plus c. We are going to use this to solve part B, which is given that definite integral from 0 to 3 of 1 over 2x plus 3 dx is ln square root p. Find the value of p, right? So we can write this as ln square root p is now given to us as equal to the definite integral from 0 to 3 of 1 over 2x plus 3 dx. What well, we just found what this is, it is basically equal to half of ln absolute value of 2x plus 3. Now we are given the limits lower 0, upper 3. So now we, we can calculate. So ln square root p can be written as half ln p and here we have what? We have half, let's put brackets, ln absolute value of 2 times 3 plus 3 minus ln absolute value of 2 times 0 plus 3. 
Okay, so we get half of ln p equals to half of so this is ln 6 plus 3 is 9 minus ln 3 right we can cancel this half and half so what do you get we get ln ln p equals to well when it is written like this you can always say it is ln 9 over 3 using the properties which is ln 3 so ln p is equals to ln 3 and that gives you the result that p is equal to 3 is that clear to you so that is how we can actually solve this question i hope you find it interesting and useful feel free to write your comment share your views and if you like and subscribe to my videos that'd be great you can actually watch rest of the questions also in this playlist to get command on integration and look into how in test papers such questions come. Thanks for your time and all the best.